Hi, welcome back to the channel. Um, for a start, if you like the content I'm sharing on this channel, please feel free to subscribe um, and like the video. This is at last my review of the Zin UX. I say at last because if you'd have watched my old video on this, you would know that um, only three weeks ago the watch stopped. And normally before the watch would stop it, you get an end of life reading, which is where the second hand stops for three seconds and then jumps three seconds and so forth. Um, a common thing on some of the high end quartz watches. Um, but it didn't do that. So I contacted Zinn directly in Germany, uh, bypassed the um, English ADs and basically contacted them directly, explained the, the fault to them and basically they said normally the watch would carry a two year warranty after service but it was out of warranty by six months but they said to be fair it shouldn't have happened. So send it to us, we'll probably cover it free of charge as a courtesy. So, but they said you probably won't get the watch back till January time. And in all fairness, it turned up on my doorstep two, just two days ago, um, which meant it was a three week turnaround, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, I was very impressed. Only slight thing was the UPS guy just left it on my doorstep, but I can't get everything. So anyway, hats off to Zinn for absolutely amazing service, especially this side of Christmas. Um, thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with them. So can't fault them on that one, well done Zinn. So this is now the actual review. So this is my UX. Me and this UX, I've kind of had this watch since 2010. Um, I owned a watch for about six months and then sold it to, while well, I was working in Germany, to a Finnish guy who basically then left the company I was working at and six years later we met again in Czech Republic working in a different company and I ended up buying my own watch back off him and even prior to that this was a used watch. So this watch in all fairness is now probably over 10 years old and good testimony to Zin's you know, German U-boat steel, which this is made of and the tagmented surfaces, it still looks great. So hats off to Zinn again. But anyway, this is part of their U-series of watches. I do own another U-series watch, which is the U2. So basically they share the same case design, which is a 44 mil case with 22 millimeter, 22 millimeter lug widths. And I say it's, German U-boat steel. So all of this, the case, is U-boat steel. The, cat, the um, bezel is taglamented, which is Sin's own technology when they hard, um, they use their way of hardening steel. And to be fair, it's they are super impressive. I once went on the Zin factory tour and they got us to try and scratch a case made from taglamented steel with a, it's quite a sharp little screwdriver and we couldn't touch it. There was about five of us on that tour and we could not touch it. This is the only um, quartz model, I think, in the entire Zin range. Um, the reason why they use quartz on this model is the UX is a phenomenal diver because what they use is oil inside the case. A normal automatic movement would not be able to function with the friction of being submerged in oil. So this, they use a torque, uh, sorry, a well, like a high torque quartz movement. The actual quartz uh, movement, this is an ETA movement. It's an ETA 955652, which has seven joules and is a Kosh rated movement. Now, Kosh works differently with quartz models as what it does with um, mechanical. So Kosh standards, I believe, with with mechanical is like minus two plus four seconds a, a day. With these, it's um, 10 seconds a year, allow no more than that. So to obtain this, it has a thermo compensator. So it can allow for temperature deviations. And so 
this watch is actually, they guarantee it to be working perfectly down to minus 30 Celsius and plus 60 Celsius, which is pretty damn phenomenal. So that's how it works. One of the other features, the oil um, inside this watch gives, uh, gives the watch is if you notice, if I turn it on a really cute angle, you can still see the watch, the actual hands of the watch, which shouldn't be possible. But you can actually still see the hands of the watch there. I've had people before, if I'm with a group of people, I've had some people come up to me and say, is that a smart watch? Because from certain angles, it just doesn't, it, it doesn't look right. It looks like the hands are painted on, like it's one dimensional. And no other watch, um, apart from the oil filled range, will do that. What that also means is when you're actually diving and you're underwater, um, if you were to turn the watch at this kind of angle, a normal watch, when you look at the glass, becomes a mirror. But yet this watch, you'll still be able to see it from any angle. To me, this really is one of the most perfect dive watches there are. Um, the dial is super clean and concise. This is the GSG-9 vari variant of the um, models. There are a couple. You can buy this in all steel like this is. You can also buy it with a black bezel. So similar to this and that's called an SDR. And you can get it in full black mode which actually is really nice. Um, the GSG-9 um, are a German military force. They're their border control, border patrol. And basically they are a special forces. They were formed after the Olympic, um, Munich Olympic disaster and really came to light in 1977 when with the aid of the um, SAS they stormed a, a jet which was on a runway and there was, I can't remember how many um, um, terrorists there were, but they eliminated all the terrorists and all the passengers survived, and that's when it came um, to full prevalence. And basically, unlike many watches which say they're used by military, these actually are. In fact, this is the older model, the EZM2. This is the EZM2B. And this model, um, a few years ago, the GSG-9, when they swapped over to the newer model, they returned their watches back to Zinn, and Zinn sold them off. And on the back, they were all marked on with the squadron number of which um, squadron would wear them. And I think they sold them off in travel cases for about a thousand euros each. Just missed out on one of them, which I was good at when I contacted Zinn. Um, so this is the new one. If you actually look up online GSG-9 and watch is worn by them, you'll actually see pictures of the guys, you know, fully kitted out in their um, um, anti-terrorist stuff with these watches on their wrist. So it's actually a watch with prevalence, really. It actually does, you know, it is used for its um, correct in, uh, purpose, which is what many of the Zim watches are. The dive bezel, the bezel on this, unidirectional, it's a 60 click and it's got the most satisfying click out of any of the Zim range. So if I hold it close, let's see if I... It's my favourite out of all the Zins. It's got a real nice click. It lines up perfectly as well. Um, just 60 click, but I find that's perfect. So I should say as well, there is an, a standard variant called just for, stand, just for UX. Hydro UX doesn't have a GSG-9 logo and the crown is at the um, four o'clock position. Um, but what the military asks for is the crown to be on this side. So many Zins have got the crown on the left-hand side because what they say is they don't want anything on this side which can interfere with their gloves and pinch into the hand while they're um, going about their work. So all military watches from Zin tend to have the crown or pushers, whatever, on the left-hand side. The, I say the bezel as well, is taglamented. It is a captive bezel. What I mean by that, there are sc screws located around the bezel, which actually lock into a groove, so you cannot just pull the bezel off. If you have a Rolex Submariner, or even on the older one, if you want to remove the, the 
the bezel, you simply can get a, a tool, to be fair, you can get a knife or even a spoon and pop the bezel off, because they are just friction fit. So if you have a submariner and you knock it against sink, the, um, there is a chance you can actually take the bezel off. Um, and obviously, if you're underwater, that is not what you want. So Zinn locates screws around it to hold it in place. So that's one of the things they do. The loom on this watch isn't so bad. It's um, not as good as some watches out there, but I don't know if that's because of the oil as well. Um, I'll drop some loom shots in now. So, but overall it's pretty good. Um, the main thing with the EZM range is clear, concise um, reading of time. And to be fair, when you look at this dial, it is lovely. The difference is with the GSG-9 versus the standard UX, it does have a white second hand. The standard UX model has the red and white second hand. But be aware, you can actually have a standard UX converted to a GSG-9 model. So if you send it in for a service, they will actually rotate the crown round. All they do is basically swap the watch around and put the crap, the, um, dial on the other way. So it can be done. Um, it's not a, a big charge, but they will actually do it. The, let's see, also on this watch, it uses the standard U-series bracelet. Um, what's nice with the U-series bracelet, it, it does actually use hex, screw, hex screws, or Allen screws if you are English, over, over in England we call them Allen keys. So you do have them, which is a nice touch, and they also come with some Loctite. So you, when you do take a link out, you can put a drop of Loctite on there and you know it's not gonna come loose. The does have a diver link extension, and it does also have three pins, uh, three positions of adjustment. The only quibble I would say about this watch is really the clasp could be nicer. Don't get me wrong, and I've said this before with other Zim watches, it's perfectly functional but it's just a bit. The rest of the watch, Zinn are known for their high-tech stuff, and the clasp is a tad low-tech, if I yeah, can say. You obviously can kit the watch out with the um, rubber, silicon, which these are very nice, so this will fit directly onto this model, and I also have a white one, which I think suits this watch a lot better because of the, the hands being white. Um, and obviously the clasp then is um, a nice machine version but again slight downside there's no adjustment so you cannot adjust this clasp apart from a dive link so that's one downside again they have just introduced this new duo system where you can adjust it a little bit but it's an extra cost on the price of the watch and I don't really agree with that. I think it should have it standard. Overall, I I like the watch. It's a great grab and go because you know for a fact the time's going to be right. Um, you can just pick it up and go. The battery life on these should last. They state five years, um, but I've heard many Zin UX owners say they get between seven or even up to ten years out of a battery. So. The you know, battery life is pretty impressive. But one thing I would state, if you're in the US um, and you're gonna buy or use one of these, make sure you know when the last battery change was because the only place it can be serviced, as far as I know, is Germany. So if you buy one in the US, you've gotta to think to yourself, you could be looking at a battery change soon-ish. Now, the price of a service is quite respectable, I'd say, because they have to drain all the oil out, clean all the movement, put it all back in, clean the dial hands, and I think it's 250 euros when I was living in Germany. Um, I don't know how, maybe about 225 pounds or 200 pounds, I'm not sure. So if you do buy one, be aware there will, you know, you can have a, um, you know, it's got to be posted off to Germany at some point. Not too bad for us guys in Europe, but for you guys in the States, it's a blooming long way. But to be fair, now with postal, let's face it, it's going to get there in a few days anyway. But always worth knowing that, just to just if you are going to buy one. The 
It's not actually a very thick watch. It's only just 13 mil thick. I think 13.5 or, or 3, something like that. So it's quite comfortable on the wrist. It's, if I quickly show it off, so I'm wearing a Seiko SBBN uh, 007 tuner, which I suppose I should do a review of some some point. So actually on the wrist, it's very respectable really. Remember my wrist size is 7.1 inches. So actually on the wrist, it doesn't stand, it's not too big at all. Um, I reckon you could get away with this on a 6.5 inch wrist still, no problem at all. So as you can see, it's not very tall. When you put it in comparison to a U2, the U2, the main difference is the back bulges out more and it has a dome crystal where this has a flat sapphire crystal and doesn't dome out so much at the back. The back of this watch actually has a diaphragm built into it. I still have a sticker on from a service, I took it off. Um, but you probably can't see that quite so much on this camera, but it has actually raised up a fraction. So when the um, temperature of the oil inside changes, the diaphragm will allow for movement of this because when you think this is a 13 millimeter watch, which can go, the case can survive 12 kilometers underwater. Yeah, kilometers. So this can go, this can go, I don't think there's anywhere on earth where it actually can go down 12 kilometers. The movement will withstand five kilometers. And again, five kilometers is absolutely amazing for a 13 mil watch. So it's, it's just crazy. This is that's why I say this is possibly the ultimate dive watch. You're never going to go anywhere where you've got to worry about the watch. So it is one of those absolutely diehard watches. Zin just have an ability to, when they attack a subject, they go all out at it. If Zin make a dive watch, they make the best. They make the deepest going dive watch. Um, yeah, pretty damn impressive. Um, apart from that, that's pretty well it. The... I say it's anti-magnetic, the German U-boat steel does a very good job of that and it just ticks all the boxes for dive watch. Also it's got enough wrist presence that it's noticed, but it, um, being that it's again this bead blasted finish, it, it's not a blingy watch. It's, I think Zinn do make amazing tool watches and this is testament to that. So. There you go. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the review and glad that I actually managed to get it done this side of Christmas. I wasn't expecting to get a watch back. But there you go. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will try and get another review out soon. Okay. All the best. Goodbye.